take a look at the mirror. in his image, but not alike. A servant, obedient to one master. My body is a shell, and I am ready to absorb him. Now I see the plan. I see the magnitude of devastation. The creator summons me, and I want to be his food. I am humming his tune. I am looking at the world through his eyes. I drink the blood of his enemies and taste the rotting bodies. I feel the sin sprouting under my skin. I hear screams in my head. I hear them calling me. I hear the calling of the ones that through him have already found their eternal shelter. Free them, my lord. Free them and take me instead. Fulfill your revenge. At the hour of my death, an army of angels comes out from the orange light. Their song is made of one powerful voice. I feel their presence, their twisted faces, their black eyes drilling into my consciousness. They demand to finish the work. Oh, his presence is overcoming me. So poor and defenseless. 
What have they done to you? What harm? There is a place. You were there, and so was I. A, a huge gate. And the creator hidden behind it. Only those few who touched him could understand. But you could. You understood. And I understood through you. Eons, that's how long I spent, suspended in nothingness. And then this one time, a pale, dim glow filled it. I felt as if some consciousness started soaking through an orange cloud into my brain, dripping with heavy drops, not letting me pass away nice and peaceful. I fought with myself. I had no strength to open my eyes. And finally... After processing the situation on and on, I realized I have no eyes.
although it was a little cold because we forgot to close the window vent. We ate breakfast, packed our things, and at 11am we were ready to go. We set off in the back of a truck, so it was a bit cold. During the ride, we talked about absolutely everything we could think of. On the spot, we spoke with some local workers. I remembered one in particular. He had a red beard. Friends called him Beardman. We cooked and ate dinner, and now we are resting. Half of the group is looking at some maps, the rest are sleeping. I started handling the equipment and writing. It is still a bit too cold. My hands are shaking, but finally my thoughts are much brighter than yesterday. No creepiness in them whatsoever. There's a long way ahead of us, but the only thing I can feel is excitement. It seems as if the forest is calling us. That beautiful, magical, dark forest. My dear Vera, I'm spending my time in the Institute on long walks in the park. Only here I can find solace, only in the shadows of the trees. My thoughts are peaceful when I see how the sun brushes the green leaves and the wind covers my face in a gentle, warm blow. The doctors say the worst is behind me. The breakdown was temporary. It's difficult for me to say what triggered this state. I know you'll never forgive me for what I've done. The tragedy that I've contributed to shall never find any justification or explanation. I can only 
covered up with madness. But I am aware that this is a pathetic excuse, and I'm not able to hide behind it. I take full responsibility for what happened, and I am prepared to be punished. The doctors, however, say I will probably not leave the Institute. You must know I would rather rot in prison a hundred times for what I have done to you. I have to confess, I tricked you. I knew you would never, ever want to hear what I have to say to you. That is why I sent my friend with this letter to your sister, and after a lot of persuasion, she agreed to read it to you. To you. I thank her from the bottom of my heart for this. I'm ending this letter. I want to bore you no more. I love you and believe that someday, hopefully, I will be able to tell you all this in person. Luckily, my friend Anton is by my side at all times. He was the one that went to your sister. I hope this letter finds you both well and in good health. I wish you all the best. Forever yours, Vitali. they call Post Office Box 5. I don't know where this is. I don't even know what year it is. They are not allowing anyone from the outside to have contact with us. They lock us up in cells, four in each. I saw dozens of cells like that. They talk about something they called Anomaly 7. Every day we undergo tests, research, tortures. I have seen how they kill people. I have seen terrible things. Write about it. Let the world know. They conduct the worst experiments possible. They have something that we call the fear chamber. There is no way to say what will happen to the person that ends up there. Some come back, but are no longer themselves. They are absent. Others are dragged out dead. Only few stay sane. I have seen a bright orange light which spoke to me in demonic voices and showed me things worse than any nightmare you can possibly dream. Sometimes people come out of there with broken bones, mutilated, crushed, irradiated, dismembered. I can't take it in anymore. Take away these images. There is a scientist amongst us. He said that during their sick experiments, they discovered something out of this world. They are trying to test it. The truth is that it 
is testing them. He told us that there are more places like this around the world, and there will come a day the gates of hell will open. You have to stop this. Destroy it. Destroy us. Kill us all. The center is governed by something that is called the Soviet Research Unit for Natural Phenomena. I have seen this on an ID card of the man that was interrogating me. He said we were prisoners, convicts, murderers, rapists, thieves. But that is not true. I have done nothing wrong. I hate them all. They call us subjects. No names, but subjects. I am Subject 73. I don't even remember my real name. I beg of you, please help us. Burn it all to the ground. If only this letter reached beyond the walls of the center. If only the guard who promised to take it has kept her promise. You have to do something. I swear by all that one holds sacred, you have to. My only cellmate, Anton, whispers in my ear that everything is going to be fine. That the orange light is singing in the voices of hundreds of angel choirs. Anton promised me that if I listen carefully to the singing, he will free me. Sometimes, however, I think that all of this does not exist. There is no prison. There are no bars. There are no doctors. There is no Anton. There's only this frightening, piercing orange light. So, we have reached the end. Have you understood your role in my plan? There are no random victims, and nobody is completely innocent. You may not agree, but when the gates to Section 22 open and the world will see true madness, you will understand that everything I had done was necessary.